Bravo. Namakuru. Diego. Dimarugo. On behalf of the United States of America and the Purpose Driven Network of Churches, over 400,000 congregations in 195 countries, we celebrate with you on this special day. And I congratulate my brothers and sisters here in Rwanda for your freedom of choice in your elections. The character and the culture of a country is always determined by our choices. Our decisions determine our destiny. The Bible tells us that a thousand years ago, God offered choices of a future to a young generation of people in a nation. Deuteronomy 30, he said, today I've set before you a clear choice for your future. You may choose life and prosperity, or you may choose death and destruction. I give you the choice to follow me and receive life, or blessings, or you may turn away from me and choose destruction and death. Now choose life. Choose life, that you may live and that your children may live, and you love the Lord your God. Today, as you begin a new administration with a re-election of President Kagame, you face a decade of destiny, and the choice is very clear. As Rwandans, we can continue in reconciliation and in love and in unity and in personal responsibility and purpose. Or we can listen to the voices that divide and destroy and discourage and would try to derail an amazing progress that's been achieved over the past 16 years. And I say to you as we pray, people of Rwanda, your past is past. It's over. Your past cannot hurt you anymore without your permission. And the only way it can continue to hurt you is by choosing to hold on to past regrets, past resentments, and past hurts. But that is our choice. Today, Rwanda is alive, and it has been reborn. And a new day is dawn. And a nation that was once forgotten by the world is now a model for the world. Now today, if you are a person of faith, I want to invite you to join me as I pray for Rwanda and her president. And I would invite you to stand right now, regardless of your faith. And if you would like to join me in this prayer, I would encourage you to stretch out your hand toward this president who you have designated for your next term of office. And if you agree with me on this prayer, you can say yes or amen or yeah, go. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are the creator of everything that is good and beautiful and everything we enjoy is a gift from you. You created this beautiful country and you created these beautiful people and you surely smiled with pleasure when you designed Rwanda. And we are grateful for your creation and we love you. Now God, we saw the face of evil in 1994 and the eternal conflict between good and evil erupted in our beloved Rwanda. And the good that you created was nearly lost. We know that everything you create, evil seeks to disintegrate. That the beauty you bestow, evil tries to blot out. That the unity you desire, evil tries to destroy and that the progress you plan for us, evil tries to prohibit. But we have fought this battle with love and forgiveness and reconciliation, and by your grace, this nation has overcome evil with good. Now in the past, Rwanda was known for guerrillas and genocide. Now Rwanda will be known for God and good government and growth. So today we celebrate not just the inauguration of a president, 
but the transformation of a nation. And what you have done the past 16 years is miraculous. You have given beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, and you have restored the years the locusts have eaten. We thank you for our president, Paul Kagame. We ask you to give him the wisdom to lead with humility, the courage to lead with integrity, the compassion to lead with generosity. Bless and protect him and every one of Rwanda's elected leaders. And we commit this president and his wife, Jeanette, and his children, Ivan and Anj and Ian and Brian, to your protection and to your care. We know that no nation can be stronger than its families, so we pray for the families of Rwanda. You have said in your word, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And help all Rwandans to remember that only God is God. And when critics seek to discourage Sibomana, and when other nations pressure Rwanda to give up its values, Sibomana, and when outsiders assume that they know what Rwanda should do, Sibomana, only you are God. These people know where they came from, they know what they want, and they know you are God. And God, you have said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and turn back to me and stop their evil ways, I will answer from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. So today, as we inaugurate again President Paul Kagame, may we rededicate ourselves to a spirit of reconciliation, unity, personal responsibility, and service to others. May Rwanda be a nation of purpose that promotes reconciliation and equips leaders and assists the poor, cares for the sick, educates the next generation, where every citizen resolves to work together for the greater good of all. I also pray that the blessing of Rwanda will be on the heads of state that are represented here today. And may we never forget that one day all nations and all people will stand accountable for you. I ask this in, humbly in the name of the one who's changed my life, Jesus. Amen.